Hi, my name is Simon Nell. I'm a technical support engineer at Oxford Technical Solutions. And today I'm going to be showing you how to set up an RTU range system. We'll be using two vehicles, one being a hunter and the other being the target. The RTU range system is a feature-rich product from Oxford Technical Solutions, which is used by vehicle manufacturers worldwide for verifying and testing advanced driver assistance systems. The system can have up to four targets, being either fixed point or mobile targets, or a pedestrian using an RT backpack. I'm going to be installing the RT and the Hunter in the vehicles using the RT strut. For these cars I've attached the extension legs which come included with the strut. They're simply attached to the base of the strut using the bolts and screw down with the wing nuts. So here we've got the RT and the Hunter installed on the strut. It's usually easiest to put them on opposing sides of the strut to get easy access to the connectors on the top of the units. The units just connect onto the strut simply using these brackets, they mount on using the wing nuts and then they screw in place using self-captured screws. Um, depending on the amount of space you've got in your vehicle, it's sometimes easier to mount them outside of the vehicle on the strut as we've done here. Here we've got the strut in the vehicle. I'm going to position it along the centre line of the vehicle and it needs to be mounted rigidly between the floor and the ceiling. So to do that, unlock the strut here, raise up the silver handle, extend it out, hold it firmly in place, lock it back down and just carefully lower the handle just to lock it in place. Just check there's no play in the strut and that it's nice and solid and it's ready to go. So we've got the RT and the Hunter set up in the vehicle. Now the RT it feeds directly into the Hunter box and we're using an RT3000 series where we've got the user cable here. So the user cable goes in the top, we've got three Ethernet ports on the front of the Hunter doesn't matter which one you use, I'll use the middle one here, and then the power it feeds into one of the lower two outlets on the front. The top one is reserved for the RT XLAN. Now when you're feeding power into it, the RT gets its power from the Hunter, and the Hunter is powered just using a standard M12 connector into the front here. We do have an RT UPS available which um, supplies a clean 12 volt power supply. Um, if you're using a UPS, then you power it between the uh, Hunter and the RT, as opposed to between from the Hunter to the power supply. Now we're going to position the antennas on the roof. We're using a dual antenna system, so we've got two antennas. The one that we're going to put at the front of the vehicle is a primary antenna and the one which we're going to position at the rear is going to be the secondary antenna. So, we've got the antenna here. When you're positioning it, then ideally it needs to be at least 30 centimetres away from the windscreen or a sunroof so it's got a good metallic ground plane around it. When we come down and do the secondary antenna, which I've got here, it needs to be positioned in a straight line behind the primary antenna. And when you position it, so you've got a small car antenna here, make sure that it's not overhanging the antenna so it would obscure, obscure the view of the satellites. <coughs> to get the best performance from your dual antenna system, it's important that the antennas are orientated in the same way. So what that means is the connector, which exits the body of the antenna, are both pointing in the same direction. So for example, if your antennas were one of them facing this way, then this would be incorrect. Now with our antennas positioned on the roof, 
we've got the primary one at the front, which we're going to connect to the uppermost connector here. They are marked primary and secondary, so a simple screw thread in, and the lower one is the secondary antenna, which is our one at the rear there. For the hunter to communicate with another vehicle, they needs to send data over a wireless LAN link, which is what we use the RTX LAN for. <clears throat> so on the hunter vehicle, we use the base RTX LAN, which is marked on the label, and on the target, uh, up to four targets, they'll each be a client XLAN. The XLAN attaches onto the vehicle using a simple suction cup. And to do that, you press it down and you pump the blue handle until the red line disappears. Then that tells you that it's mounted securely on the vehicle. Now it's important that the XLAN isn't directly next to either of the GPS antennas you're using because otherwise it will block the signal, meaning that your antennas aren't going to track satellites. So that's why I've mounted it on the side of the vehicle, far away from the antenna. So the XLAN just has a single connector here. And there's a port marked XLAN on the Hunter and it's the only one which the XLAN connector can plug into. So it's a simple screw thread here. So here we've got the target vehicle we've set up. It's exactly the same setup as the Hunter vehicle. We've got the RTX LAN on the side of the car, this being a client X LAN as opposed to the base on the Hunter. We've got the target RT and the target box on the strut in the same configuration on opposing sides of the strut. And we're using a single antenna RT2002 model uh, on this vehicle. So there's just one antenna on the roof. Now, the antenna can be anywhere on the roof. It doesn't have to be directly above the unit but just so long as it's at least 30 centimetres from the windscreen or sunroof or the edge of the vehicle. So here we are in the target vehicle. This one has an RT2000 model as opposed to the RT3000 which is in the Hunter vehicle. So where the 3000 has uh, a user cable with all the connections coming off the cable, this one has um, separate connectors on the front panel. So the, to power this, through the target, you use an M12 to M12 connector, which is included with the RT range S, and you insert the connectors here. Obviously screw them down securely so they don't come loose during use. And the separate Ethernet connector, this connects from the Ethernet port on the RT2000 to any of the three connectors on the front of the target box, it doesn't matter which one. And when you're using an RT range system it's important that both vehicles are in high precision accuracy mode, so RTK integer mode. Um, if you're using a base station then you'll need to connect up a radio modem and the model varies dependent on which country you're in. So on an RT2000 series use the cable which is included uh, with the unit and it connects into the differential port uh, just on the front panel here. Here in the Hunter vehicle with the RT3000 model if we're going to be connecting up a radio modem to receive differential corrections then it connects into this 15-way connector which comes directly from the user cable. Dependent on the radio modem you're using, um, you may be required to use a 15-way to 9-way adapter, which will be included with your radio modem. In the target vehicle, it's possible to bypass the target box and connect the RT directly to the XLAN. And for that, you need this cable, which is called the Y cable. So the XLAN cable connects into the Y cable and then this has a separate Ethernet connector which connects to the RT. Now you can either do this through a cross coupler if you can't reach the RT 
or it can go directly into the Ethernet port on the front of the RT2000. Now, the XLAN still needs power, so you'll need two power outlets, one for the RT itself, and then a second one for the RT XLAN.